<clears throat> all right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahushai, Ba'ashim, Ha'kwadash. Yahweh, being the Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in, Ha'ada, Sham, name, Yahushai, being the only begotten Son, meaning He delivered, He saved. Ha'kwadash, Holy Spirit. Okay. Double honors unto our apostles, others great most in our wealth. Peace and blessings unto the elect of Israel. Shalom and a Bible ball. Back at it with the list of the sprinter power, Yahweh Shem Shai. Lord willing, the video is edifying. Okay? And this is an exhortation to just pretty much, you know, boost brothers and you sincere elect members out there, brothers, sisters, you know, whomsoever. You may be, you know, to boost your spirits up, okay, and to remind you that this truth, you know, in this truth, you have to overcome that bitterness that comes with this truth, okay, because in this truth, you will face ups, you will face downs, there'll be times where you lose, there'll be times where you win, so to speak, all right, but the main thing is just maintaining the spirit of, <clears throat> you know, knowing what the bigger picture is for lack of better words because you got a lot of people who come into this truth and the reason why they fall out is because they caught so much hell that that, that they let that bitterness overcome their spirit and so now they gave up on you how about shy they gave up on this truth they gave up on the body of mashiach you know so now you know because of their bitterness and all the hell that they caught in this truth they pretty much lost sight of the bigger picture. So then they thought to themselves, well, how shy I ain't coming back yet. I'm steady catching hell. You know what I mean? This, that, and the third. You know, might as well just go back into the world. In their mind, they think that that's, you know, um, the right thing to do. But really, that's far from it, man. Okay? And in the world, you're going to get, you're going to catch hell just like in the truth, you're going to catch hell. You know, but they forget that. Okay, they forget that thing. They forget those things, and um, you know, they really think that the world is a better alternative. But you know, it's all set up through the spirit, anyways. You know, but we we hope and pray that Yahweh Shemashai keeps the spirit on us to not be overcome with the bitterness, man. You know, and to understand the bigger picture, to understand what we're involved in, and to understand that you know, not every day is gonna be sunshine, rainbows, and uh. Lollipops, so to speak, man. Okay? <clears throat> you know? This truth ain't easy, man. You know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily an uh, impossible thing to serve the Lord to the best of your ability. Okay? You know, but at the same time, this truth isn't just a, a cakewalk because, you know, you do go through certain things. You know, you will go through certain things. Okay? In this walk of ours. You know? So I just want to go ahead and get this quote right here. All right, there's a quote because sometimes I watch a uh, stoic videos because in the truth, you have to have a stoic mindset in righteousness, you know, basically that type of mindset to be able to endure and bear pain with a with a good mindset. OK, you know, and that and that and that is truly mental strength right there. And this truth, you have to have mental strength, having mental strength, spiritual strength in this truth is more important than having physical uh, bodily strength. OK. You know, there's a scripture where it says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small, meaning you're mentally weak. You know, and the brother said this yesterday at the camp. It's the spirit that he even said it because I wasn't planning on doing this lesson today, you know, from yesterday. But it's the spirit that the brother said it. But he basically said, uh, um, you know, basically, if you are mentally strong, that's that's better than being physically strong or bodily strong. You know, he said, if you have a weak mind, but you're bodily strong, then really you're weak. Something along those lines, you know, roughly paraphrasing. You know, I'm not saying it exactly what he said verbatim, but I'm pretty much saying the concept of what he said, the gifs of what he said. All right. <clears throat> and so, you know, the brother on point for that, man. The scriptures say, you know, a man's infirmity will sustain him, but a wounded spirit who can bear, you know. So when your spirit is wounded, when your mind is wounded. It's a lot harder to recover from that than when your body is wounded, man. You know? And 
that's the main thing, you know, just keeping a healthy mind, healthy spirit, not letting bitterness overcome you, man. Keeping, strengthening your mind, strengthening your spirit. It's good to strengthen your body as well, you know. But the spiritual strength is what matters most. And you got to pray to Yahweh Shemeshah to give you the spirit to do so, to make your mind stronger. Because in the truth, you're going to catch hell. You're going to have ups and downs. You're going to have highs and lows. It's all about bouncing back, you know, being a man and enduring. You know, a true man has to be able to withstand hardship, okay, and still be able to function and think and process information logically and not just allow his emotions, you know, to fluster or flutter his mind, you know, and have him all over the place, flabbergasted and stuff. You know what I mean? You got to stay locked in. You got to stay in the spirit. You know, scripture say, be angry and sin not. So you can't let your emotions get you up out the way. Okay, but a lot of jigs, they come into this truth and they let their emotions and that bitterness overcome them and they fall out because of it, because of all the hell that they caught. Which the thing about it is, is like, bro, we went off any damn ways. So everything that comes upon us, we deserve, you know? And I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him, man. And this ain't the end all be all. Babylon is not the place where much glory doth abide. This isn't the place where we're supposed to be living it up. We're in prison. If you forgot, okay, you know, so don't expect it to be all fucking, you know, all sweet over here, man, because it's not. That doesn't mean you're always going to catch hell, but when you do catch hell, you don't be surprised, you know, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Mashiach's sufferings, man, you know. Because a lot of dudes want to come in the spirit of, oh, why me, God? Why me? Ah, why not you? You know, why not you? What makes you think that you're so special to be uh, exempt from the judgment of the Lord? Or the chast, I'll say the chastisement of the Lord, rather. Most high chastised his only begotten son, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, who is way more righteous than us all. Okay? And he didn't spare him. So what makes you think he's going to spare us? You know, and the Lord punishes us so that he could bring forth the righteous fruit within us. You know, the most highest chastisement is a form of education, meaning the Lord's drawing out of us that uh, those uh, righteous characteristics within us, man. Because, you know, when you go through hardships, that's what helps tempers your character. You know, when you don't ever go through anything, it, it doesn't build character in you, man. That's why a lot of kings... You know, even though they come from noble stock, they still go through different trials and hardships and training <clears throat> so, that they so that they could build character, you know? But anyways, let me, let me read this. This is a quote, right? I'm not sure who it's by. I'm sure if you're going to look it up on Google, you can find it. But the quote, uh, the quote stood out to me. All right, it says, here is a rule to remember in future. Wherein anything tempts you to feel bitter, it says, not this is misfortune, but to bear it worthily is good fortune, right? So when anything tempts you to be bitter, okay, think about it like this. Don't think like, not this is misfortune, but to bear it worthily is good fortune, man. So if you bear it worthily, you take it as a man, <clears throat> That's more acceptable in the sight of Yahweh Bashmel Shai than you just come crying and complaining. Why me? Why me? You know, why did this happen happen to me? Instead, have the mindset of like, okay, the Wadi Yahweh Bashmel Shai, I'm going through this. I know there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. I know the Lord's going to get me through this. I, Lord, teach me to be patient, understand what lessons I need to learn from the situation. And I know it's a lot easier said than done. <clears throat> like the Apostle Paul said in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. No chastisement of the present time seemeth to be glorious, but rather grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruits of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. <clears throat> so when you're going through it, it's a lot easier to just complain. Scripture say the affliction of an hour maketh the man to forget prosperity. And the prosperity maketh the man to forget affliction. That's why in the day of affliction, you're supposed to remember prosperity. And in the day of uh, prosperity, you're supposed to remember affliction to keep you level-headed, man. <clears throat> and the 
And that's what's profitable for us in this truth, to be level-headed, to have a fortified spirit. Scripture speaks about the wisdom of Solomon 8, how to have a fortified spirit is, is, is nothing. There's nothing more profitable than that for a man. You know, you got to be fortified in this thing, man. You got to be built up in your mind to be able to withstand hardship. Okay. You know. <clears throat> What's that other scripture in Baruch? Suffer patiently the wrath of the Most High that has come upon you. Right. We got to suffer this wrath patiently, man. You know, we got to be long suffering in this truth. That's a part of having the fruits of the spirit. But if you're weak, you're going to let bitterness overcome you and trick you out your blessing. You know? This is uh, another one. It says, except whatever comes to you woven in the pattern of your destiny for what could more aptly fit your deeds. Okay? So you got to pretty much, like scripture say, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, man, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Okay? For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. That's Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 2, uh, verse 4 through 5. Okay? So, you got to just accept it. Oh, the Spirit. Sirach, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, set thy heart aright, and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Yeah, you got to be in that type of spirit and this truth. Because you will be tempted. You will be tried. Okay? And a part of those temptations and trials is bitterness. Okay? Because Scripture speaks about he that hath suffered in the flesh has seized from sin. So your flesh has its own desires and aspirations. And when you resist those temptations and desires, it's a quote unquote bitter feeling in the flesh because you're withholding your flesh from its desires. So your flesh is throwing a little fit and it feels bitter, but in the spirit it's sweet. Okay. That's why the scripture saying Sirach or Ecclesiastes, there is nothing sweeter than the fear of the Lord. Okay. You know, and it says, um, so Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 2. I'll read it again. Set thy heart aright. So you got to get your mind right and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Yeah, don't be all hasty. You know, the scripture say, He that believeth on him, talk about our Lord Yahweh Shai, shall not make haste, man. When you believe and you, Yahweh Shai is your foundation, you're not going to make haste in the time of trouble. You're going to be relying upon the Lord. Scripture speaks about how. You know, he shall not be moved. His heart is fixed, trusting in Yahweh Bashem al Shai, roughly paraphrasing. I think that's in Psalms. Okay? So we have to be unmovable in this thing. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Can't just be swayed with any little temptation, man. You got to have a fortified mind and spirit. You know, and I know it's a lot easier said than done, but sometimes the flesh will trick you to make you think that your situation is just so bad, the Lord can't revive you out of it. And, you know, that bitterness is just so much worth you being bitter and all up in your feelings and forgetting the bigger picture than you being spiritual and understanding what you're involved in and knowing that, hey, this ain't the end all be all any damn ways. How about Shemesh is going to change this situation? You know? But so that's a, lot of, that's a lot of ways how dudes get kicked out the faith, man. Because that bitterness, they, they weren't built up. They, they were not fortified. And now being built up is a daily process. I'm not sitting here saying that I'm fully equipped for the battle. You know, I have my flaws, okay? But I'm talking about being built up mentally, man. Being able to take, to be able to uh, catch hell. Because, shit, if you're fainting because of the adversity that we go through now, how much more in Jacob's trouble? <laughs> okay? It's Christian, a time of trouble the world has never seen before. So if you're fainting from adversity now, and the day of Jacob's trouble, man, you ain't going to be able to stand. You won't even be able to last a day, man, okay? And that starts now. The Lord is building us up that for that right now through the Spirit. So Ecclesiastes chapter 2, starting to verse 3, cleave unto him and depart not away. Cleaving unto the Lord is uh, Sirach 25 and 12. Faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. It says that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Right. Okay? So we got to cleave unto Yahweh Bashmasha that we may be increased at our last end. And ultimately, what's that last end? The day of salvation. But even in a sense of, you know, many victories, if you endure, you cleave unto him, 
at the last end of that trial, that temptation, you know, you're going to be increased, man. You know? It says, um, so Ecclesiastes 2 and 4, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient with thou art changed to a low estate. It says, for gold is trying to fire an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. Right. And that's what it is. How about some of putting us through that furnace of adversity, man? Okay? So... You know, if we want to be found acceptable inside of Yabash Mashah, we have to be tried in the fire to see whether we truly love the Lord or not. And, the, and that fire comes to us by the different various ways of trials and tribulations to see if we're going to maintain our faith in Yahabash Mashah or succumb to the trial and the temptation. You know, Hebrews 12 and 1, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, meaning what? That the angels are watching us. It says, Let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Right? This is a thing of patience. Okay, this isn't a sprint, it's a marathon, spiritual marathon, man. Okay? This truth is a thing of endurance. You know? It says, looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before us endured the cross, right? Saki, who for the joy set before that was who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, right? So before Yahweh Shah received the glory, the joy, the power, he had to endure the cross, man. Same way for us. If we want to reign with him, we must suffer with him first. Okay, we must be a partaker of the sufferings. Then we will be partakers of the glory and the reward. Okay, a lot of Jake wanted to be the other way around. A lot of Jake want to get the reward and then suffer after. No, we got to go through the sufferings first, man. You know, that way when we do get the reward, we do get the glory. We know how to maintain it because we've been through the sufferings. It's a perfect process of Yahweh Bashmah Okay, you have to trust the process, man. If you know the Lord is with you, you have to trust the process. Okay, this is where faith comes in. It says, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be wearied and faint in your minds. Right, so you, if, you get, if you get weak, think about what the, what, all the stuff that Yahweh shot went through, you know? And, and, he, and he took it cheerfully. He endured it with good courage. Okay? You know, and look at the reward that he's going to receive, man. And we're going to be joint heirs with him, Lord willing, if we suffer with him and endure it to the end. And you have a bunch of Messiah is not unrighteous to forget all the things that we're going through. The Lord will reward us, man. Scripture say, verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a power that judges in the earth, man. Uh, and in this truth, you will face bitterness, man. So you have to learn to just accept it. And Apostle Har says this a lot. You have to learn to love to catch hell. Okay? You have to learn to love to catch hell. And when you learn to love to catch hell, when you can learn to kiss adversity in the face, you know, to embrace adversity, and you, 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 you a bad man. Okay? In a good sense. You a bad man. You know? Because how can you defeat a man who embraces conflict, who embraces adversity, who embraces, you know, going through the fire, man. A dude like that is hard to conquer. And that's what Yahweh Hashem is molding us to be like, man. You know, men who are ready to manfully, you know, fight and to live or to die valiantly, like Judas, uh, Judas Maccabees and his men. When they were fighting off the heathen for righteousness sake, they were ready to live or die manfully, valiantly, man. I'm going to show you what, that they embraced that bitterness. They embraced catching hell. They weren't mentally weak. They were fortified in the spirit. Okay? Let me get that precept since I keep quoting it. It's a lock here. Wisdom of Solomon 8, turn that up. Verse 7. And if a man love righteousness, her labors are virtues, for she teacheth temperance, which is basically discipline, self-restraint, and prudence. Right? The prudent... The way of the prudent is to understand his way. Uh, you know, roughly paraphrasing. So prudent pretty much means you do your research. 
you are you 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 can foresee the evil coming down the pipeline you have pretty much uh knowledge and discretion okay it says justice meaning you know how to execute judgment okay proper righteous judgment it says and fortitude which are such things as men can have nothing more profitable in their life right so if you have those qualities as a man then those are profitable unto you okay so our ecclesiastes 21 and 12 he that is not wise will not be taught right because you know those who are foolish in the spirit two-thirds of our people they can never be taught the ways of righteousness until they be changed ultimately okay and it says but there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness right and that's this truth this truth you know much wisdom let me get that real quick ecclesiastes 1 and 18 for in much wisdom is much grief and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow right and why is that because you know the more that you learn is the more sorrowful you become because you understand how fucked up this world truly is, man. Okay, and, and, and how we really need salvation and we need the Lord to change us and change everything, you know? And that's why they say that smart people don't have a lot of friends, <laughs> okay? And who, who, who's, who's the smartest people in the world, really? The elect, okay, who know and understand this truth. The elect truly are the smartest people in the world. Regardless if you don't know how to break down, you know, Esau's math equations and, you know, his textbook history and you were a straight A student in school. Well, if you have this wisdom knowledge understanding, you're technically smarter than anyone in this world. Scripture say the wisdom of Yahweh is, uh, is, uh, is wiser than men. Okay? So, really, the smartest ones are the elect. Okay? Those that have this true wisdom. And it says, um, so that's the point on that right there. So in this truth, you're going to go through bitterness. You're going to go through hardships, times, and tribulations. But you got to endure. Okay, Hebrews 12 15, looking diligently, lest any man of you, lest any man fall of the grace of you, how about Shai, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Right, because you got a lot of people, when they get bitter in this thing, they're defiled. They don't know how to act afterwards, you know, and they forget the bigger picture. And they it's like, and then they fall out. Okay, and you don't want to be like that, you know. This uh, Ephesians four verse thirty, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shai, whereby ye are sealed unto the day, day of redemption. Right, and how do you grieve the Holy Spirit? Ultimately, by not taking heed unto it. If you don't take heed to the Holy Spirit, you're going to grieve the Holy Spirit, man. Okay? And it says, it says, uh, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Right? So we're supposed to put away bitterness, you know? We're supposed to put that from us, man, because that's going to defile you in the spirit. It says, and be ye kind to one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Mosai for Mashiach's sake have forgiven you. And that's the type of spirit that we should have with each other too. Because a lot of dudes come in this truth and they get bitter towards the body, towards the brethren. That's not the spirit of being either, man. You have to be patient, tenderhearted to brothers, man. Forgiving brothers, just like how Yahweh Mashiach forgave us. Because, you know, you might get wronged by a brother. And you let that bitterness overcome you. Then you're going to let Satan overcome you, man. Next thing you know, you're looking at the brother with an evil eye, and now you're in the wrong too, okay? Because you didn't respond to the situation correctly because there's, there's two ways to win in the spirit when it comes to a trial or adversity. It's first and foremost, all right, let's say, give an example, right? Because like they say, that's half the battle, right? They say that's half the battle. There's, there's two parts of the battle, so to speak, in most circumstances in the spirit. And the first part of the battle is whether you made the offense or not, okay? So let's say someone made an offense against you, you know, for whatever it may have been. Someone made the offense against you, okay? You're blameless because you didn't necessarily do that act. So on that first half, you're blameless. And now what completes your blamelessness, so to speak, is how you respond to the event. Are you responding in the spirit or are you responding carnally? in the flesh okay 
Because now let's say, you know, let's say for some reason someone did something to you. Now they're in the wrong, right? But now if you respond back with that same carnal energy or wicked energy, now you're in the wrong and you both lost, even though you technically didn't start it. But it's the way you responded to it, man. Same thing in the spirit. When those demons try to try you, how are you responding to those situations? Are you falling into those temptations? Are you allowing them to get the best of you? Are you responding in the spirit? Maintaining your frame, your righteous masculine frame, you know? And you're not just reacting out of emotions of the flesh. That's how you truly win in those spiritual battles because, you know, there might be a point where you, you might even be right. But the way that you responded made you wrong, now you lost. You see what I'm saying? So it's a two-part way, you know? It's kind of like in football. You score a touchdown, then you kick the field goal. You could either get seven points or you could get six points, depending on if you make that field goal or not, man. And that extra field goal can make or, or make or break you in certain game time situations and circumstances, man. You know, so that's just a little spiritual analogy, man. All right? It's a balance, you know? You got to... Uh, you got to crush your opponent completely. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm speaking spiritually, of course. You know? But, you know, with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Shai, Bashem, Chak, Dash, Double Honest, the Apostles, Great Muslim, and Ruel. Peace and blessings to you, like the Israel. Shalom and Ababal.